Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain Free and Fit. Today we've got a great healing exercise for self-treatment of your spondylolisthesis pain at home by learning what mistakes to watch out for with climbing steps. Hope you enjoy. So many people with spondylolisthesis pain don't realize that in the course of a day, as they're climbing stairs, which many of us do, we're actually irritating our spondylolisthesis because of a mechanical insult from improper body mechanics. There are three major points that you should look out for when you climb stairs to ease your back pain. There is stress placed not only on the facet joints in the spondylolisthesis, but also the disc fibers, the sacroiliac joints, and the hip that can all aggravate spondylolisthesis pain. So keeping these three tips in mind will really help you decrease the mechanical stresses that aggravate your back pain. Number one, when we take a step forward to a stair, many of us with spondylolisthesis that have an anterior pelvis, meaning that the pubic bone is lower than the tailbone, when that occurs, that's an anterior tilt posture, it means our hip flexors are contributing too much to the hip motion of hip flexion and they're not being stabilized enough by the glute max or buttock muscle, meaning that the hip or the leg bone in the hip socket is actually slightly moving forward as we bend to take a step. We have another video series on this particular exercise correction that you can go to on our channel, but for now, let's just say that if you feel the side of your leg up into your hip, there's gonna be a bony knob. That's the greater trochanter, it's the side of your hip. It's about the size of a golf ball. If you take one finger and go to the front of that ball and one finger to the back of the ball, as you flex your leg to take a step, you'll notice that there's more pressure towards your front finger, indicating overactive hip flexor muscles and an anterior hip line, and less pressure against your back finger, which is the buttock muscle. If that's the case, you need to emphasize tensing that leg bone in the socket backwards into your back finger by utilizing buttock contraction to ease the hip flexor muscle activity. And that can be done initially just by simply raising your heel as your toe stays down to create that proper motion and to practice that coordinated motion. Once you get down, once we hit the step, many times the problem is one of hip hiking, which is when I go to stand up, my hip on that side of the weight bearing leg will swing upwards and my rib cage will swing downwards as I step. And you'll see this in many people, but especially those with spinal, this puts a lot of stress not only the sacroiliac joint, but a compressive force into the disc and the facet joints on that side of the spinal and an overstretching of the lower back soft tissues on the opposite side. So once your foot is planted, and please make sure that your leg is straight ahead and not angled out to one side, you wanna make sure you have good mechanics, keeping your knee and your foot straight ahead. You wanna swing your lead hip down a bit and lift your lead ribs up so that you're creating a level rib cage and pelvis as you go to stand. Avoiding the typical mistake of hip hiking and torso side leaning. The last thing you wanna keep in mind with stair stepping is to make sure you're using the glute and not the back muscle. Many people have weak glutes in spondylolisthesis, and as a result, the back muscles participate too much during the lift and the step. So to reduce that chance of that error, you need to keep the tail under a little bit more. Remember, that's a posterior pelvic tilt where the pubic bone moves up and the tail moves under, engaging the abdominals to pull the pubic bone up. That will ease the pressure on your back muscles, the erector spinae, and allow you to grab or clench the buttock much better than if you didn't hold the tail under. Now, if you've taken any of our other videos on spondylolisthesis, you know about a neutral spine position. And while there are many aspects to learning a neutral spine based on your posture and mechanics, and if you haven't yet checked out your posture and mechanics, you should go to either the Posture Size or the Pain Free and Fit website. We have a free body analysis to learn what your unique mechanics are because you need to hold your RPI, reverse posture isometric, and all your muscle and posture corrections while doing any exercise for spondylolisthesis or any healing exercise, you know that if you tuck your tail under too far, there may be some pulling in your back and irritation. And if you raise your tailbone up, there may be some irritation. So you want to position your pelvic tilt halfway between those two extremes. That's a neutral spine position speaking strictly 
from an anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. There are other aspects of neutral spine, but that's one big aspect of it. So once you get that tailbone set to that mid position, between too much tail up creates back pain, too much tail under may stretch your back. Once you get it into that position, you're gonna maintain that, resisting the tendency for the tail to lift as you tighten the buttock on the standing leg and come up. So those are the three phases. Thinking about a backward slide with the hip bone as you step, making sure your foot and knee are straight ahead, not turned out to one side. And then right before the push up, where you're going to lift your body, you're thinking lead hip down, lead rib up, so you're level, and then keeping that tail under tension to squeeze the buttock or to activate that buttock as you come straight up. Practicing that step after step is going to train new mechanics in your lower back. It's gonna ease the pressure on sacroiliac and lumbar joints, lumbar discs, and many times help with your spondylolisthesis pain by activating weak muscles and inhibiting over tight muscles that are aggravating your lower back mechanics. If you like this video and would like to learn more exercises of how to relieve spondylolisthesis pain, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this and would like to help me share it with others. Remember, if you're looking for a unique program to build at home for yourself in terms of rehabbing your own spondylolisthesis mechanics, go to our painfreeandfit.com website. We have a free body analysis there. And once you take that analysis, you can then use the Fast Track Healing Exercise Program, the analysis is in there also, a more in-depth one, to target your unique mechanical issues. It'll teach you pain relief exercises, stretches, coordination exercises, strengthening exercises, nutrition, and even exercises to get you back to your favorite sports, all tailored for your unique body, posture, and mechanics. I hope this exercise series on stair-stepping helps you with your lower back spondylolisthesis pain.